Welcome back. This is part four of building Carnotaurus Mock. I know this was supposed to be a um, a build part series, but I managed to get this finished in a lot less um, lot less sittings than I thought. Probably about six, seven sittings in total. And you know, while I didn't record a video for each sitting, I've managed to get four out there, so that's not too bad. Hope you guys are happy with that. So anyway, as you can see, the Carnotaurus Mock is done, complete, and ready to display next month. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a walkthrough, a few of the processes, a few of the little things I had trouble with, things that were quite easy. And yeah, like I said, I'll take you through, through a bit of a walkthrough. I know I said I would try and do a, you know, a weekly segment, but it's been probably last six weeks very busy. I got married, had a small operation, so and then back to work. So I've been actually, yeah, pretty busy. So thanks for being patient, guys. But anyway, I got it done and I thought I'll record a final video for you before I move on to my next project. So let's just go have a little walkthrough. And also, for, you, for those of you that didn't know, this is based off the 1994 Kenner Jurassic Park uh, Series 2 toy line, the Carnotaurus toy from that. That's where I, I got the color scheme from. If you've seen the, the part one of this, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I'll put a little picture up in the left hand just so give you a little um, give you a little reminder. Okay, as we start off, as you can see, I've got the ground fully decked out and covered in plants. Those of you that do um, sort of Lego terrain builds like this, you'll know plant pieces are very expensive, especially those leafy jungle pieces. Very, very expensive in big, especially in big quantities, even small quantities actually. So I do order quite a few, quite a few plants in, but yeah, I order a little bit, few too many, but they never go to waste. So here we go. We have a couple sort of little mud puddles. I'll keep this camera as steady as I can, guys, and hopefully it focuses for you. So there's a couple mud puddles there. That's a snot technique then. Some of those new little I don't know, lily pad pieces there. And also, it's guys, snot technique, studs not on top, if you didn't know. I know it sounds a bit stupid, but anyway. Okay, we come down here to the carcass. And then we've got, I don't know, thigh bone. There, bloody thigh bone. Once I saw, I, I realised I had those, uh, what are they, technic ball pieces or whatever. I thought, yep, that's perfect for the, uh, the ball end of the... Sort of the bones. If anyone has a better better idea to shape a bone, like I don't know, leave a comment, leave a comment in the comment section, I suppose. There's a half-eaten rib cage. I use one of the super old. Uh, no, it's one of the newer Superman capes, the softer capes, for a bit of flesh hanging off the rib there. Okay, we, as I pan back out, we've got the perimeter fence. I um was like I said in, in previous videos. I initially wasn't going to do the perimeter fence. I was going to have this uh, kind of freestanding, but it was just the, the thing is just too 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 front heavy. The head just the head and all that front section just uh, it doesn't balance out with the the slenderness of the tail. And it wants to, wants to tip forward. It can self support. The only problem is these to get the 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 angles there on the legs. I'm using those click joints, click hinges. I think click hinges, yeah. And they're sort of, they're grey and they give you good, um, good, uh, what do you call it, angles, but they're not the strongest. So the whole thing sort of wants to tip forward. I think if you sneezed at it, it will just fall over. So what I've done here is I've had to, I've had to double pin with two clear rods into the side of the Carnotaurus and then into the perimeter fence. So when you actually look at it from this side view like this, and when it's on display, you'll never see it, so... I thought, look, it's the best way I can do it. I mean, I th the only other way I, I thought would be to have some sort of clear support from sort of under the, the chest there down to the ground, but that would just be super obvious and it'd be a bit distracting. So I thought I hid that pretty well. I tried my best, guys, to get it to totally freestand, but honestly, that's the best I could come up with. So the perimeter fence there, like I said, I had to order a few more of these. I had about five out of my childhood collection, so I had to order a few more. I think I got them from Serbia. Yeah, they're, they're hard to come by on Bricklink in sort of larger quantities and for a decent price. So yeah, I think it was Serbia or somewhere I had to buy them from. Took a little while to ship over. 
I think the perimeter fence turned out pretty good. I considered putting lights in it, but I was like, oh, whatever. I'm done. Flashing lights actually would have been good, pretty good now looking at it. Anyway, maybe one day in the future. And then we'll come back to the main event herself. Carnotaurus, the big girl. There she is. If you see from the previous video, I switched out the eyes. I had um, just round yellow tiles for the eyes. It looked a bit, even though it's codenamed Demon, it looked a bit possessed, a bit demonic. So I got the, I think they've these printed tiles are from the Abelisk. I could be wrong. The Abelisk um, Guardians of the Galaxy set. But hey, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. I think they, they worked out pretty well. They give it that demon look, but there's there's a pupil. It's got a bit of a bit of character, I think. Um, as you can see, I've got it, it's got his little stubby arms there. Little arms are quite oh, a lot easier to put together than the legs, that's for damn sure. Uh, clip for the teeth. I think that worked out pretty well, actually. That was that was the plan from the from the get go. Clip for teeth because they're not oversized that way, and they're sort of all clustered together. Yeah, like I said in previous videos, guys, legs was legs was getting those angles was quite difficult to make it look sort of organic. But and then I've sort of just embedded the feet into the ground there, and then just hit a bit of the rough edges with some uh, with some greenery. So I hope that looks alright. I think it looks pretty good actually. Because I know there was a couple um, dinosaur sets, Jurassic Park sets that got put on Lego Ideas, and they didn't get they didn't get passed, but. They looked really well, and they were smaller scale than this, and I thought, well, I could probably go bigger in scale and add more detail, so I did. Because I think one was a Indominus Rex, and the other was a T-Rex, and they, they looked great, and they weren't even in massive scale, and I thought, I can add more detail on a bigger dinosaur, so that's what I went ahead and did. And pretty much finished just in time for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, so can't wait for that to, that to drop. It's going to be awesome. Finally get Carnotaurus on the big screen. Not this demon version, but just... A, you know, a more generic version, but still awesome. Uh, put some. She got some spines along her back there. I try to blend in the uh, the red, the dark red and black, as best I can. So it doesn't look all too uniform. She, you know, she looks a bit, bit scaly and a bit. You know how you going? Uh, those horns are soft pieces. So the kids don't poke their eyes out. And there's a little. Uh, a view if you're um, if you're a prey item there that's the last thing you'd see I think and as we pan back out I'll just put the camera down and wrap this video up all right guys so that's about it I hope you enjoyed the build I hope you enjoyed the build series I know it was short I know you didn't get to see a lot of the internal and the the things that went wrong things I had to rebuild sorry for the shaky cam but um to be honest not too much went wrong with it not too much I had to actually rebuild I think the only thing I had to really rebuild was this tail section it was too short so I added probably about that much in and then stuck the tail on the end of that and yeah that fixed it right up but besides that everything went together really smooth besides the legs the legs Actually, the legs did take about three attempts to get right. I tried so many different combinations and pieces, and in the end, that's what that's what worked. That was the strongest, the most streamlined looking. So I went with that. I think it turned out pretty well. And also being all black for the legs, it you can hide a lot of a lot of things in shadow, and you know it's it all sort of blends. So so anyway, guys, that's part four done and dusted. If you follow me on Instagram, I am. I've, for the last year, I've been building a Lego Fallout vault, fully lit, internally lit up with light my bricks. I'm building a red rocket on top, road section. The whole mock is probably about, going to be about six foot long, so, and about, oh, let's say 750 millimeters high. So, so it's it's quite a huge mock, mock sorry. So... What I was thinking was, I was even though it's probably two thirds of the way done, there's I've got so much more to do. I've got I'm always changing things once I find better ideas, maybe better color schemes. So look, you guys, this is done and dusted for a while. These sort of this mock, I've got a few freestanding mocks now. I'm going to sort of dedicate my time to my big Fallout build. 
So if you'd like to see me do like a weekly or fortnightly, um, not live build, but like a like a build update of where I'm at with the build, just let me know in the comments. Also have a look at my Instagram, it's mk underscore bricks, check it out. I, I try and post as regularly as I can, I try to build as much as I can, you know, where time allows, but there's plenty, plenty of Fallout related Lego content on there. So, like I said, if you want me to do a build series, let me know. There's always there's always plenty to film for that. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed my build. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next vet next video. Oh, next 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 video. Subscribe if you like what you see. You probably don't like what you hear with the you know Aussie accent, but don't worry about that. Um, maybe if you don't like, you can just mute it and just enjoy the mock. So anyway, thanks guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time. Bye.